Good morning, um, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on this Migrant Leaders and CBRE webinar about the apprenticeships and career opportunities that are available to you from one of our key corporate partners at Migrant Leaders, CBRE. Uh, I really want to emphasize uh, that CBRE is what we call a Fortune 500 company, one of the 500 largest companies in the US quoted on the New York Stock Exchange. They have global operations, including in the UK, and fantastic apprenticeship opportunities um, that you can look at and, if you like, apply at the end of year 11, if you want to start an apprenticeship the following summer, or at the end of year 13. Likewise, if you want to start an apprenticeship the following summer. The good thing with apprenticeships you will hear is that is that you will have um, your education paid for by CBRE and you get some time off to go to college as well, all paid. So you get the support uh, of a fantastic company like CBRE while you're training practically in your job in CBRE as well. So apprenticeships are a fantastic opportunity that you will hear about from the CBRE team shortly. I also want to give you an introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Elham. Fardot. I'm the founder and CEO of the charity Migrant Leaders. Um, I've spent 23 years in large corporates as a finance director in GE, News Corp and Ernest & Young and five years ago launched the charity Migrant Leaders. Uh, we've got 1,400 senior mentors from 95 FTSE 100 and leading firms such as CBRE, and we give uh, the young people, primarily in year 12s and year 13, um, their own mentor matching to their future aspirations, and lots and lots of opportunities and connections, insight days, internships, and work experiences. So that's what Migrant Leaders is about. I encourage um, all year 11s, as soon as they turn 16 and are eligible to join Migrant Leaders, to check our website, migrantleaders.org. .uk and apply as a candidate if you wish. Um, likewise with year 12 and year 13 to look at migrantleaders.org.uk and apply as a candidate. So without further ado, I am really pleased to hand over to uh, our CBRE leader, uh, Chris Williams, who will do a short introduction of himself and the company next. Thank you. Thank you, Elham, and thank you to all of you that have joined promptly. And um, I just want to spend a few moments really talking about who we are. Um, I know Elham kind of gave you a bit of summary, but I want to start off by just talking about some of the customers that we support, right? We support quite a few customers around the world. We operate in over 100 countries. And if, in those 100 countries, you will recognize some of the customers we support. So if I said Google, if I said Microsoft or Facebook or Meta, as you know them as, if I said Amazon or TikTok, if I said Cadbury Chocolate, they're, they're known more as Mondelez professionally, but you might know them as Cadbury Chocolate, um, Nike, Apple, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, T-Mobile, Uber, Ikea. I could take up the whole time just telling you all the different customers, right, which I won't do. But these are some of the customers that CBRE supports. So... Whilst you might not have heard of us, you've definitely heard of the customers that we support. And when I say that we support, it's we look after their buildings. We might end up buying their buildings for them. They'll give us the money and say, hey, go and find us a building in Nigeria. Go and find us a building in Saudi Arabia. That's what they would come to us for. And then once we've got those buildings for them, we are one of the largest companies in the world that would actually provide services to that customer in their building. So whether that would be making sure their heating's working, making sure the lighting's working, making sure that the landscaping, so all the plants and the trees outside are done properly, whether it's us, you know, developing a library for them or creating a swimming pool or creating a data center for them. Just that's what they come to CBRE to do. So when we think about a career in CBRE, think of it as we are the toolbox that helps fix everything in a, a car that may be um, not working. We are that toolbox, that mechanic that just makes sure that car runs well. That's what we do for the buildings for our customer. And all of those customers that I've just mentioned, 
we make sure their buildings are running correctly so that they can focus on putting content on Facebook or making sure Google's working. They make sure that they are at their desk and they're doing whatever they do. We make sure the surrounding the environment around them is working. And guess what? That also means that we have finance people that work for us. That also means that we have people that focus on procurement in terms of engaging with suppliers and subcontractors. And that just means a third party externally that we would work with. We have architects, we have surveyors, we have quantity surveyors. It just list goes on and on in terms of the job opportunities that are available at CBRE. And we have a huge team of people, over 119,000 globally, and we want more. This is why we're talking to you. We want more people because people are at the heart of what we do. We have over 100 apprentices that we're going to be applying or sorry, we're going to be selecting this year for opportunities. The same will be next year. It's just going up and up and up. So I believe from listening to some career stories from some of my colleagues in a moment, you're going to hear us some good opportunities that you could join us with. And even if you don't hear your particular career story mentioned, Believe me, go on our website, you'll see some fantastic opportunities out there. So they're my few words. Thank you so much for spending the time to hear about what you can do in the future. Elham, am I handing back to you or am I handing to someone else? You are, you are indeed, Chris. I will next be sharing uh, the presentation and we will take it from there. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris. Okay, so... We will be looking at, at we've had the Migrant Leaders intro. Um, Chris Williams, obviously, thank you very much for your amazing um, personal um, introduction to CBRE, which I think is more effective than any uh, formal presentation because the young people get to hear it like it is and what CBRE really does and what it feels like to work for CBRE and what impact they have on their wonderful corporate clients that you mentioned. So I will be next going to Mohammed's career story. And Mohammed, would you like to introduce yourself and share your um, excellent career story? Yes, um, thank you uh, very much. I'm Mohammed Bassid. I am a global HSE uh, lead uh, on a top financial institution that CBRE services. Um, so what does that mean? I'll get to that when I get to the end of uh, my journey. But if I take it all the way back, my journey kind of started where everybody is on this uh, call, I guess. Uh, year 12, year 13, you've finished your GCSEs, you start to look at your A-levels and kind of what you're going to do next. And to be honest, when I thought about it, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew the subjects that I quite liked learning about. And in my case, it was psychology. So uh, when I left um, school from GCSE period to do A-levels, I kind of did a degree in, uh, sorry, I did a, a psychology A-level and I really found that I enjoyed it. I liked learning about different kind of human behaviours and kind of di dynamics and um, kind of all of the possibilities that psychology leads into. At the same time, I've put in here, uh, when I was doing my A-levels, I also started off as a Saturday assistant at Greg's the Bakers. That's relevant because as we uh, get along, you'll see why. Um, so after I did my A-levels, I kind of pursued a degree in psychology and I went to one of the top universities at the time, Royal Holloway, part of the University of London group, and did three amazing years learning about it. The only difference was, I think when I did it at degree level, I appreciated kind of the detail and the um, minutia that comes in with uh, studying psychology across various fields. And it was very different to A-level, which was a much more high level. So at A-level, you kind of appreciate, I guess, kind of the newspaper clippings and kind of the headline stories that you get. You do it at a, a degree level and you realise they're looking at kind of much more granular level in order to get the bigger findings. And whilst I still enjoyed it, it just didn't really seem, or certain sections of psychology didn't really seem as something that I uh, was too keen to pursue. But nonetheless, after my psychology degree at uh, university, I was still at Greg's the Bakers. And while I was there in the three years between um uh, well, in the five years between A level and a uh, degree level, I was kind of working my way through the retail side of things. So I started off as a Saturday assistant 
and through uh, various uh, exposure to different uh, elements of the retail uh, management process, I ended up being kind of like a regional manager for them, for a cluster of shops, but it wasn't really my true calling. So um, I then decided to kind of look at the internal ads within Greg's and found that there was a role within HR, which was kind of more linked towards psychology. So I thought, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I did about six months within HR at Greg's and then I realized it's not really for me either <laughs> so you can see there's a trend where I'm trying things uh, out and I think that's one of the main messages I want to relay to people is it's okay not to kind of know what you want to do as long as you kind of take every opportunity that's presented to you so while I was there at Greg's um, uh, within their um, uh, offices working in HR it, the safety department was tied to uh, HR and they had a, a just so happened to have a position for a safety coordinator. Now, at this stage, I knew nothing about health and safety and um, decided to kind of um, try my hand at it based on the feedback from my manager who said, actually, we think you'd be quite good at safety because it relies on people skills, relies on a bit looking at processes and systems and kind of understanding human behavior. Um, and so they strongly encouraged me to take the move and I've not looked back since. So I worked for Greg's for another what, a further five years. So all in all, I did 10 years, five years on the safety side of things, five years before that on the retail side of things. And it was a fantastic learning environment. I learned all about manufacturing safety, all about retail safety uh, and a warehouse and logistics safety, which then led nicely into my next career which was I went from uh, retail and manufacturing predominantly to warehouse and logistics because I really enjoyed that kind of workplace transport uh, dynamic of where you've got vehicles in a closed area and how do you make sure that stuff is being loaded safely whilst no one's getting injured how do you stop a forklift truck um, from uh, operating when you've got people moving cages of cakes and stuff um, when I worked at uh, Kuna Nagel don't worry if you don't know who they are. They're kind of like DHL, but they're rivals. That's the best way of describing who uh, uh, KN are. I did a good five years at Kuna Nagel, um, where I really kind of learned uh, about third party logistics and the differences between contractors and client side and kind of managing uh, various different contracts from the likes of Virgin Media to Sainsbury's to even the Ministry of Defence as part of that spread while I was there which then uh, the role at KN was kind of much more a um, uh, UK uh, role. And I really wanted to go from the regional role that I had at Greg's to the U from the UK role that I had Kuna Nagel to more of an EMEA uh, role, which is where I started my career with uh, CBRE. So I came in as the EMEA safety manager for uh, Reuters at the time. I can disclose that name because they're no longer a client of CBRE. And that was a fantastic, again, opportunity for me to apply everything I'd learned from the UK health and safety side of things across uh, the wider Europe, Middle East and Africa portfolio. So taking the skills I already had, transferring that to a different play, uh, playground, as it were. And fast forward to seven years later, I'm still at CBRE. I'm on my third different client in that seven years. And I am now the global HSE lead, which means I'm responsible for everything that goes on in Europe, Middle East, Africa, the Asia Pacific region, and recently the Americas portfolio. So hopefully that's a bit of an insight. And I think the key message from all of that is Grab the opportunities that you get and remember everything that you learn is fully transferable. There is no such thing as a wasted experience or a bad experience. It's all about how you take the good stuff and then how you apply it to the new uh, parameters that you're given. Thank you so much, Mohammed. I thoroughly enjoyed hearing about your career story. And I think for me, what characterizes your career story is that you knew roughly what you were interested in at the beginning. You pivoted that, tried two or three different things, and at various stages, paused to think, is this what I really enjoy and what I'm really brilliant at? And you recalibrated your career and moved in a correct direction based on that question. What am I really good at? What do I really enjoy based on the experiences that I've had so far? And by a little bit of trial and error, that then led you to your long-term career and your own 
on, on the way up at CBRE. Um, so that's a very, very good career story and a very good model, actually, of how to manage one's career. Thank you so much, Mohammed. And participants, um, students and teachers who are on the line, um, we are going to be moving to Steph Beeman uh, as our final career story today. If you have questions regarding um, CBRE or, or, or at the apprenticeships or for Mohammed or Steph, um, please do type your questions in the chat function of Zoom and I will be fielding those questions to the speakers at the end of the online workshop today uh, so that they can answer those. So I will be moving to Steph next. Thank you so much, Steph. Hi, thank you. Um, my name's Steph. I am a systems administrator for CBRE. I've been working there for nearly four months now, so not very long. Um, I took this opportunity because I believe that sometimes you don't necessarily get the opportunities and it's something that I didn't have myself. So I wanted to tell you that you don't necessarily get given the opportunities. If you work hard, that's what you get. Um, so I, I originally started off the age of 18 as a bar manager um, and worked bar work and suddenly um, it became my life. Loved bar work, enjoyed it, loved the communication with people and the atmosphere I had. Um, I ended up having twin boys at the age of 21. Um, that's a lot of work. So uh, I didn't work for a bit, um, became a single parent in 2014 and didn't have any experience in a job that could help me with childcare and things like that. Bar work is evening work, you know, most of the time. So it wasn't really helpful for me. Um, so what I did was I went to the job centre and I said, well, what can I do? I don't know what to do. I want to work. I don't want to be out of work. And they gave me a volunteer opportunity for about eight months. And I worked in their admin side and I learned all about admin and how to use Excel and Word and every system possible on their systems. It gave me the opportunity there as well um, because they had access to all of the apprenticeships and the, the career opportunities that there were. I was able to be um, in the lucky position of taking one of those apprenticeships. Now, I was 24 when I took my first apprenticeship. So it doesn't matter what age you are. They said to me, I, I was actually on my apprenticeship with someone who was 56. So it doesn't matter what age you are, you can go, oh, I don't really want to do that. I, I, I'm not, I want to try this instead and go into an apprenticeship and you earn whilst you're learning. So at the age of 24, I took my first business administration year. Um, passed with flying colours. I did that within the NHS. I was a business administrator for the NHS theatre department at Kidderminster Hospital um, in Worcestershire. And I loved it, absolutely loved it, learning all about it. I even got to watch the surgeries, go into the theatre and watch them do surgery. It was so much fun. Um, I ended up doing my second year at a different hospital, um, but I worked for both hospitals covering annual leave and things because I knew how it worked. And I passed that. Um, they encourage you during your second year to seek employment after about six or seven months because they want you to be within employment if there isn't a career after that apprenticeship within the role you're in. So I actually moved to a career in business administration for community paediatrics. So I helped support children um, and young adults with ADHD, autism, Asperger's, uh, fecal alcohol syndrome, all sorts of medical conditions. And that was so rewarding because you saw these children who were getting this help and they were growing and they were going to do apprenticeships like I was. And they'd ask me questions when they came in. And it was so rewarding to see those children grow into young adults. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, and I loved it. Unfortunately, um, I had to travel for that job and the public transport system wasn't very reliable. So I had to change to a closer career. And I took a job at a company called Aventis. They do medical engineering. <clears throat> I was there for four years. Um, medical engineering was very, very easy for me because I'd been in the medical industry and I knew the equipment that was used. But they accepted people in that company for um, even if they didn't know anything. And the learning and, and how I learned with that company was fantastic. And I learned a lot more 
which enabled me to move forward. And within three months, I was promoted to an account manager from an office based receptionist. And it was fantastic. Um, during my four years there, we were with COVID and um, it was a lot of remote working. And we actually set up the Nightingale hospitals. So that was um, fun, a lot of work and a lot of uh, effort to be put in. But we learned a lot and it was it was brilliant learning all about how to set these things up and what you can do when you don't know to expect it. You know, COVID wasn't something to be expected. So when you've not been in that situation, it was a learning curve for everyone and how to do these things. And I think everyone became a bit more sturdy as a human being and and how to deal with things that are very unexpected. Um, in January, uh, in August last year, I became a admin manager for a property contractors. Um, I felt like I was moving on. I wanted to try something different. I loved working with medical side of things. After a few years, I thought I want to try something and see what that's like. Um, I was there for a few months. Sadly, they were closing down. I was made redundant. But what I learned there was what helped me with CBRE. So in January this year, I was very, very lucky to get a job at CBRE as a systems administrator uh, in the ratings department. So we look at business rates for each property that is either owned or occupied by a client. Um, it's not something I'd ever done before. I'd never, I never knew about business rates before I started this role, but I knew the property contract inside of it, which helped a little bit. Um, but they've taught me goodness knows how much. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I've worked with so many different departments to learn about the business rates and I've been accepted and they gave me the opportunity, even though I had no experience within the ratings team or the rating side of it, they've given me an opportunity and said, actually, you've got this experience, you've got that experience, let's try it. And this is something that I've not done before, but I've pushed since 2013, since having my children, I've pushed and worked my way up the ladder. And it was a quote that I've put on this slide as a quote that from a film um, that really helped me. And it's, you've got brains in your head and feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. And it's true. It doesn't matter what background you come from or anything and what situation you're put in, you can push. And I've worked from a point where I couldn't go on holiday. I couldn't, um, I struggled financially. Doing apprenticeships, it wasn't the best wage when I was younger. However, it got more and more and I've worked my way up and I've got from not being able to afford a lot to, as in that picture, I'm wearing an England shirt. In February, I went to go and watch England versus Italy in Rome in the Rugby Six Nations. So I've gone from one very small, not very good situation to a situation where I can afford to go and do things like that and take my children on holiday and enjoy life with them. And with CBRE, I get to work from home whenever I want to. So if I have childcare issues or if I'm not feeling very well, and I can come and work from home and be in the comfort of my own home as long as I'm there to do the work. So I'm very glad to be here and tell you about it because it's a fantastic, fantastic company to work for. Thank you so much, Steph. That was absolutely wonderful and inspirational. Um, when I reflect on your career story, uh, what strikes me is that whatever you chose to do at various stages, I think you gave it your all. And that's why you gained the skills and the credibility and track record that has got you to then enter CBRE what, in what is a very supportive team and supportive company with an abundance of resources and opportunities. Uh, it, this is absolutely wonderful. Um, so again, I reiterate um, any questions that um, that um, the young people or um, teachers have, you can type it into the chat function. And I think we have five minutes left um, before we close the online workshop. It's worth noting that CBRE apprenticeships um, are currently open for applications. And typically, if you are looking to start an 
apprenticeship in August 2024 and you're a year 11 or year 13 student, now is the time to be looking at that. Um, these are links um, that uh, I have shared in this presentation, but I will be sending the links and application instructions to your school teachers who will then share those with you. Uh, please do mention that you're from Migrant Leaders on your application. Uh, there, there's a drop down menu and you can also mention migrant leaders on your application just to make the CBRE team a, a, a aware of um, uh, what source your application comes from. And now is then the time for questions and answers. I will stop sharing the deck and start checking the um, chat function for any questions that anyone might have. Um, I guess before everyone types in the questions, um, I think a question would be, um, when should they apply for the apprenticeships? If they're a year 11 or year 13 student, um, when is the application window to the CBRE apprenticeships? Chris um, or anyone else, would you like to answer that? Just, can you help me with the years that you mentioned? Is that year eleven? So at the end of GCSEs or year thirteens at the end of their A levels. So when is what? When is that? Is that now? Are they finishing yeah. now? I'm not. Yeah, yeah, they'll be finishing um, June 2024. Either their GCSEs right. or their A levels. Okay, so if you're finishing June 24, the apprenticeship window will open for you in January 2025. And it runs from January to March, where we'll be looking at receiving applications and taking people through assessment centres to then find out who's been successful for September start 2025. Okay. And if someone is a year 11 or year 13 student now and are mm -hmm. finishing in June, but mm -hmm. really want to start an apprenticeship in August, can they apply now or should they wait for their GCSE or A-level results that typically come out in August? They can apply now, providing they can they have proof that their predicted grades are, and this is where I get confused with the I, I remember the GCSEs, but C and above, and I think nine and above, does that make sense? Um, I... Yeah. So um a nine um is an A star, A star, um is an A star star, and eight is A star. A seven is A, um, a six is a B, and five is a C. It's GCSEs. Yeah, I've got I got confused already. So no, don't worry. what I did tell you, what I didn't tell you all is that I left school with nothing. I didn't even sit the exams, right? And I went through the apprenticeship route. I started my first apprenticeship at 16 years of age to become an electrician. And I've worked my way up um, even to the point where three years ago. I became an apprentice again to do a master's degree, which costs £18,000, but CBRE paid for me to do a master's degree. And now I'm a, a, you know, I'm a global director of a big, large company like this. So don't, you know, that you can hear me saying, I'm not too sure if it's a C or a nine, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I've done okay, I think. Yeah, yours is a wonderful um, success story, Chris, and amazing that CBRE even paid for your master's. It's fantastic. There is a question in the chat. Um, they're asking, what's the starting salary for um, for apprentice for an apprentice and for a typical managerial position? So I'm probably not the best to answer. I remember, I remember it being twelve thousand, but I know it's gone up since then. So don't quote me. I think it's closer to either the high i think it's in london it's around 14 15 000, but don't quote me on that i think we need to reply i'll i'll send the response to you el harman and get the correct numbers out in terms of a typical manager's position typical manager's role tends to be thirty thousand and above depending on um, what part of the business that they're in um, but you could also expect somewhere around 40 45 it really just depends on what you're a manager of um, but I would say the average for most managers is 45, but you, you you do have some managerial roles that can start at 35. Again, it just depends on what you're manager of. If you're manager of one person, you're probably going to be getting 35. If you're manager of a team of five, six, seven, um, then yeah, it would be a bit more. 
Thank you so much, Chris. The next question has come up from the, 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 the classes. Um, what, is, what is the most important trait in order to stand out from your co-workers once you already have a job? Well, because this trait is singular, so I can't give you a list, um, just somebody who's able to get things done. That's all that companies are looking for. Someone who can get things done because they're always challenges. They're always things. And someone's, oh, I can't do it because it's snowing. Oh, I can't do it because my teammate didn't turn up. Companies are not interested in that. They just want someone who can get things done and use your initiative. And then that will take you a very long way. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, so we are now um, at 11.46. We promised to finish at 11.45 unless there are any further questions from the school's classes. Um, we will end it there. Thank you, Chris, Mohammed, Steph, and everyone from CBRE who are behind uh, delivering this fantastic workshop. Uh, thank you so much. And I see in the chat thank yous from the classes as well. Thank you very much. And uh, I will be distributing the video in the next couple of weeks, both to the school and the CBRE team for approval and distribution. Thank you, everyone. Lots of thank yous from the classes. Thank you, everyone, for having us. Have a great thank day. You. Take care.